Some novels are so seamlessly written, it's hard to imagine the years of hard work that went into writing them. With Martha Teichner, time for a master class in the writer's craft from best-selling author Hernan Diaz. I prefer to write with this pen because I, if one can feel love for objects, I, I, I feel love for this pen. Hernan Diaz writes longhand. There is the sensual experience of, of writing longhand. Uh, there is something about the murmur of the pen on the paper. There is nothing like it for me. He covers every square inch of every page in his notebooks. Look at this crazy page. Uh, look, but not up close. He's uncomfortable, even a little bit superstitious, about letting a camera capture something so intimate and personal. This is trust. This is trust. This is book two of trust. I brought the handwritten manuscript of the novel that just won him the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, absolutely brilliant. An international bestseller, published in 35 languages. Trust is about how money is made. The kaleidoscopic telling of the same story in four different voices. One novel in four books. I think the most pleasurable book to write was the first one, because I came up with a conceit that allowed me to write in this obsolete, beautiful tone. Yeah. And I was so happy. Yeah. Think Edith Wharton's novels about wealth and class during the Gilded Age at the end of the 19th century. She's a major influence in my writing, in my way of thinking about prose and the English language and the novel as a form. Wharton's home, The Mount, in Lenox, Massachusetts, is where Diaz's book event took place. Her family was part of the privileged class called Old New York Society. Her father did not work. His family money came from his grandfather who made it in shipping. Lucretia, the mother's family, dated back to the Mayflower. A moneyed world where money isn't mentioned, but it does speak. In other words, exactly the kind of world that the stratospherically rich fictional tycoon in trust comes from. My job is about being right, always. And if I'm ever wrong, I will use all the means at my disposal to bend and align reality in such a way that my mistake ceases to be a mistake. That's a shocking notion. It is a shocking notion. In the style of the great man memoir, he pontificates about manipulating markets during the crazy, booming 1920s. And then again, when Wall Street crashes in 1929, his fortune growing exponentially, while other people are ruined. Then Diaz twists the kaleidoscope, so readers see the man's wife through her diary. As I started reading about American finance and the history of, of money making in, in America, it became absolutely apparent that this was a, a male world, a, an, an utterly womanless world. And it was crushing also doing my research and going through the papers of these uh, the wives of real American tycoons to see uh, uh, how suffocating and claustrophobic uh, most of their lives were. Diaz researches like the PhD scholar he is, and then sets about myth-busting, taking tropes of the American story and picking them apart. I'm lucky to live a few blocks away from here, so I, I got to inhabit the world of the novel. And one of my main characters, lives there, was a big Italian enclave, enclave that way. And then over there, of course, is the financial district. A universe, not just a river apart at the time the events of the book take place. The difference between this and this. The book is very much interested in this dissonance, in this contrast of these two realities on either side of the East River. I am the son of Italian immigrants. Uh, they went to Buenos Aires, Argentina, but they could just as well have ended here in Brooklyn. And I don't think 
you can write about New York City without writing about immigration. This is a city of immigrants, uh, all of us. Oh, there's the Statue of Liberty there's right over there. 50 now, Hernan Diaz moved to Sweden at the age of two. His parents forced to flee Argentina after a military coup. We spoke Spanish at home, but I spoke Swedish out in the world. And um, I went to grade school there. And then uh, with the return of democracy, we all moved back to Argentina. I can't say I was happy at the time. I think it was very hard for me. And I think the decision to, to move at age 23, 24, uh, first to London, where I lived for a couple of years, and then to Brooklyn here, where I've been for over 25 years now, had to do, you know, with choosing my own linguistic home. And that was, that was English. I love the sound of English, the music of English. I love the things my face has to do to speak English. It feels good. It was a lifesaver. I, you know, a true refuge. Hernan Diaz also loves libraries. And this is your special... This is, this is it. This is, this is where it all happened. Particularly his favorite spot in this one, at the Center for Brooklyn History near his home. Most of the things that I've written uh, since I moved to this neighborhood, which was in 2010, I've written in, in this room. For years, without recognition. It was a sad, dark, long stretch of my life, you know, under the cold shadow of rejection that went on for a really, really, really long time. Um, and I kept writing just out of sheer love of language and, and sentences. Until, at last, a miracle of validation. He sent the book he wrote in these red notebooks to a small publisher in Minneapolis. To have one day a year where they accept unsolicited submissions. His lucky day. Uh, they, they took it on without, without any kind of questions. And your reaction? There were a lot of tears. It was the, His novel, it was, it was In the Distance, the an eerie genre-bending Western, was named a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize in 2018. And then, this year, he won for trust. Over the course of five years, these two massive things happened. Uh, it's a lot to take in, really. But my goals have not changed. Um, my goal is always that the sentence that I'm writing is as beautiful as it can be. Like Blowing this one, at the went. end of trust. Words peeling off from things, in and out of sleep, like a needle coming out from under a black cloth and then vanishing again unthreaded.